Imam, your line is muted. Eh, uh, mute line. You can talk to Sorry, Inshallah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. أفضل الصلاة وأتمها على أشرف الأنبياء وإمام المرسلين سيدنا ومولانا محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم I start in the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى I ask him to give more blessings to our beloved Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم his household, his companions, and Muslims all over the world. I greet you with the best greetings. These greetings, لو صعدت إلى السماء لكانت قمر مليرا. If it goes up to the sky, if it's elevated by the power of Allah into the sky into the heaven you would have seen it that it is indeed a moon it's like a moon assalamu alaikum that we'd say because this is the word that is taught to us by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so if it ascended to the to the sky wallahi it is brighter than the light of the moon ولو نزلت إلى الأرض لكساها سندسا وحريرا. If it comes down to the earth, every and touches every single thing on the earth, the entire pebbles on the earth would have been converted into gold and silver and expensive pears. ولو مزجت بماء البحار لحولتها إلى ماء فرات سلسبيلا. And if it's mixed, it's mixed with water, such as that that we, you and I, shall be drinking in Jannah, inshallah. We wouldn't need to purify water before we drink it, because it has mixed with salam, peace, the one that's saving us. The one that is securing us is a special water of Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And that best greeting is Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And today we are going to talk about sadaqah because this is the time of sadaqah, this is the time of charity. And especially given the pandemic that we are experiencing. Sometimes some of us think that Sadako is limited to given charity in, mon in monetary form. Whereas it's never like that. Sadako. There are type, there are other types of sadaqa other than financial help. So there are, in, in other words, there are many ways to do this. And sadaqa has so many benefits. So many benefits. And we shall talk about some of these benefits. And one of it is dua. Khasatan especially bi dhuhri al-ghayb. Al-du'a'u bi dhuhri al-ghayb. What does he mean? Prayer for the people you care about or any person who ask you for du'a, for prayer. You know, it is like it is fasting. You and I are fasting now. No one knows whether I am fasting or you are fasting, except Allah. That's why the Hadith of Islam tells us that Asawm li fasting is for me. Wa ana And Allah says, is the one that knows the measure 
of the reward. No one. Likewise, the dua. It is easy for someone to pray right in front of you. I say, oh, you know, I pray for you. I all pray for you. Oh, Allah, may Allah protect you. May Allah do this for you. May Allah do this for you. But behind the back, the same person is talking ill of you. The same person can't, you know, <laughs> this happens a lot. Whereas, or have bad, you know, ill thought about you. He's not sincere in his prayer for you. But for someone, simply means the dua that you say behind someone, maybe you see someone that is in need or that is going through some problems. And just between you and Allah, you go downstairs to the masjid. I'm sorry, uh, I said downstairs here because our masjid is in the basement here in Cairo. So, uh, I'm sorry. But so, you just go to maybe in your room or you go to a masjid or just where you are sitting, you just pray to Allah. Just between you and Allah, no one. Oh Allah, please, I pray to you to please help so, 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 and so person. Another prayer, you pray for him from your heart of heart, from the bottom of your heart, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps the person that you know that is experiencing some problems. It could be sickness, could be sickness, could be other problems. So, dua is a type of sadaqah. As you pray from your heart of heart, without anyone being with you, without any, that person being in your presence, without that person witnessing you praying for him or her, that is a high, is a level of sincerity that we shall all try to achieve. So therefore, prayer for the people you care about or any person who ask you for dua. Someone says, please remember me in your dua. Don't play with it. It's a request when you get home or wherever. If you know you're going to forget, maybe a few minutes after that, after that when he has left uh, uh, you or when he has finished talking to you on the phone, immediately try to pray for that person because you may forget. That's a request. And that also is a form of sadaqa for you too. It is indeed a form of sadaqa for you. So that it is itself is sadaqa. And also we like to talk about the second category of sadaqa. Of course, there are so many. I won't be able to mention all of them, but I will try as much as possible to mention some and also talk about some benefits. Spread knowledge among the people, one of the way to have what is called Sadaqatun, Sadaqat al is by spread knowledge, by spreading knowledge. You spread knowledge in many ways and part, the best of it is like Al-Waqfu fi nashr al-ilmi Min a'adhami al-ibadat Al-waqfu fi nashri al-ilmi Whereby you look for a way A way by which knowledge about Allah can continue Could be by sponsoring someone as, as, And now when we're talking about knowledge Number one thing here is the knowledge of Sharia Knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Any way by which you can help make the knowledge of Allah to spread. I'm, I'm sure some of us do send your you know, children to madrasa anywhere. It doesn't matter. Send them to learn because so that the knowledge of Allah remains in the heart of that person. He learns the law, the love of the words of Allah. And he also admonished him or her, the children, to also pass it on to their own children. So that is one way. 
Another way it could be by building a, a school, a madrasa, so that people learn from it, so that people do not forget the purpose of their creation. As Allah already told us, Allah said he didn't create human being, nor jinn except for, for his worship. So the purpose of our creation, our being, is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So al-waqfu, anything you can do that will continue, continuous sadaqa, charity, is one of sadaqa, because that itself is sadaqa. So that is giving in charity. So, therefore, وَتُقِيمُ الدِّينَ وَتُعْلِي رَأِيَةَ الدِّينِ تُسَاعِدُ فِي إِقَامَةِ حُجَّةِ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْعِبَادِ وَهُوَ سَبَبْ أي وَهُوَ سَبَبْ إِرْسَالِ الرُّسُلِ And we know that is the purpose for which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent His prophets. The purpose, so you in your intention by doing so, you are indeed raising the flag of La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Also, this is hujja, this is evidence. So, it is evidence that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, that we use against some people on the day of resurrection. So, you're helping the evidence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, وَلِكُلِّ وِجِهَةٌ هُوَ مُوَلِّيهَا As we said, there are different types of sadaqah. That is also one of the ways by which you can give in charity. Another one is advice. Wise advice. So, number three here is the advice. Some people, you may not have monetary, you know, money to give to someone. But, but you have some good advice, sincere advice that could help someone to excel in life, to help someone to excel in his studies, to help someone to excel in his understanding of the deen, of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A good advice, a good advice, even though sometimes a nasiha, which is advice, it could be very bitter. It could be bitter. And sometimes when we are giving advice, we need to relax. And we need to look, why am I giving this advice to this person? Because sometimes advice may mix up with just our own feelings. Advice, you need to calm down and relax and look. What I want to say, this is what I want to say. Do I want to say it for my own benefit? This advice, is it a true advice? Is it a sincere advice? Or I just want to say it. Because sometimes, as I said, sometimes we give, I will give an advice that may not really mean good for that person. It may not mean really good things for, uh, to the person we're advising. So therefore, a sincere advice is a form of sadaqa. A sincere advice. Adino and nasiha. So we give a good advice to someone, even if you don't have anything. If you have done that sincerely, you will have the reward of someone who gives in charity. Another one is to put smile on the face of other people. Sometimes other some people are sad. They may not have they may have money. They may not need your help that much in any way. It could be that out of your sincerity. You may take that person out on a lunch, for example. You eat with that person, make him feel comfortable. Find a way to relieve him of the stress that is going through. That's why the Prophet told us what the Sumuka fi wajihi akhika sadaqa. When you put smile, when you yourself smiles, you meet someone cheerfully you know the person also meets meet you like that when you meet someone cheerful cheerfully that itself is a form of 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 charity 
So therefore, try when you see someone that is sad, find a way to make that person happy. It could be by staying with that person for a while. It could be by taking that person out to relieve him of the problem of, 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 of the stress that he's going through that we leave him. Because sometimes you just need someone in that kind of position. You just need someone to talk to. And when he talks to you, or when you take him out, or when we spend some time with him, for the sake of Allah, for the sake of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also help you. Another hadith, Ar-Rahimuna yarhamuhum ar-Rahman. Irhamu man fil awdi, yarhamukum man fil sama. In this hadith, Prophet said that those who love to show mercy to people, the most merciful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will show mercy upon them. So mercy upon, upon those on earth and those in the, in the, in the heaven will also show mercy upon you. It means that like the angels will also pray for you. So when you put smile on the face of those who are sad or those who are in need, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also be in be, uh, be of help to you. Number five here is help to solve people's problem. And we know in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet told us that in Allah fi awnil abadi ma dam al abadu fi awn akhi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will help a person who is helping his brothers or his sisters. So as long as your intention, as long as you mean well, if you meant well, and you help another person that is in trouble, that is in trouble, in problem, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you. And the more help you offer, the more mercy of Allah you gain. Also, number six is time. Time. Take time out for your parents. Take time out for your parents, your children, or your husband or your wife. So your parents need you. And while they are alive, do everything possible to take care of them. They may have their, their thoughts. Some people will just kind of centralize on some of their faults. Do your own duties. This is compulsory upon you to take care of them. Whatever their incongruencies, their problems are, leave that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do the best you can to take care of your parents. They come first after Allah and his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So take time out for them. They were busy when they were taking care of you also. Now that you have grown up, you think you are so busy. No, brothers and sisters, always take time out for them. Look at what Allah tells us in the Quran. Ahadumma <laughs> وَقُلْ رَبِّ رُشْعَمْهُمَا وَقُلْ رَبِّ رُشْعَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِ صَغِيرًا 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it is the decree of Allah that you worship none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And be righteous to your parent. When they have become old, one of them or both of them, do not say word to them, do not shout at them, do not do not stop them from asking you when they ask you asked yesterday, you asked before yes, you asked before yesterday. I gave you, I've been giving you. Why, why are you bothering me too much? All kind of things. Whenever Shaitan is suggesting this to us, we are human beings, of course, Shaitan will suggest all kind of things to us. Reject it. Remember, these are your parents. You can't be rude to them. You got to be nice to them. Even if they are not Muslims. Even if they are not Muslims. And Allah talks about what in jahadaka ala tushrika bi ma laysa laka bihi ilmu fala tuta'huma wa sahibihuma fi dunya ma'rufa wa attabi' sabila man anaba ilayk Allah SWT says, if they have tried that you associate partners with Allah, if they wanted you to do that, do not follow them. But Allah says a point, if a really strong point here. In this life, do good to them. Be their friends. So, do not say, simply because your parents are not Muslims, for example, you do not like them. You do not want them. You don't. You, you just do anything. No, no, no. You, it, it could be that out of your righteousness that they will change. You do not know. But it is your duty to do what is right. It is your duty to do what is right, even if they are not Muslims. So therefore, Allah continues to say, lahuma min Look, Allah uses the word wings. No matter how much wings you may have grown, how rich you may have become, how important a person you have become in amongst people. You know, you may be a director, you may be whatever. When you are talking to them or you are before them, spread your wing of, of mercy for them. You know? Don't stand up like, you know, my, my you know, they, they don't know anything. You know, they are not educated. <laughs> you are, I'm sorry for you if you are saying such things. And simply because you, you think you are living, mashallah, uh, to very, you see what's going on. We can't learn from it. That there's nothing. There's nothing. Because of technology, because of whatever, because of knowledge you have, they are the one that give birth to you. They are your parents. So, no matter how much wings, wings you may have grown, please make sure that you bring yourself down to the lowest of the low when it comes to talking to them and when it talk, comes to answering their requests. So, and also our children, when he, they, they need something, you need to provide it. If you can you know, let them know in a very good way. Take them out. And also, wife and husband, we need time. We need to spend time also together. So, we're moving from that to another topic. That is terbiah. Help your children to be well-mannered. We should all help our children to be well-mannered. Because 
the reward, what part of the reward, part of sadaqah that you're going to be getting is what your children are doing also. Any righteousness that comes from your children, you will also have share of that goodness. So it is not a joke. It is so important that we help to train our children to be well behaved and well mannered and well nurtured. So may Allah help us to do that. So that is a form of, of charity. Your children, whatever righteousness they are able to do, you're going to have a full reward, not half. Not that Allah will give, him, he'll give that child of yours a full reward that you get half. No, you're both going to get the same reward, full reward of what your child did. And full reward of what you are doing, your parent will get it also. That's why we also pray. Rabbana atina min There's a particular one. Dhurriyatan tayyiba. When Allah asks us to, to ask for good offsprings. Rabbana habalana min ladunka rahmatan. Rabbana habalana. Uh, that's, a, that's a particular one I'm trying to remember. Oh Allah, give us from our wives or from our husband and our children's children and our children's children children. Those who will be coolness of our eyes. How do they how would they be the coolness of our eyes? If out from their righteousness, from their goodness, from the way a manner they behave. That's how they become coolness. If you heard that. Your child have just done something or donate something for those who are experiencing some difficulties or have read Quran or have, is uh, your child is learning about Allah or is giving lecture to some people or is preaching Islam to, to those who don't know it or explaining explaining some words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How, how would you feel? You feel a kind of tranquility, peace and tranquility within you. So this is a form of sadaqah. It is a sadaqa. So when we train them well, when they are well nurtured, of course, we continue to get full reward. It's not half. You remember one of my favorite quotes that Walladina Amanu Watabatihum Duriatuhum bi imanin al Hakona bihim duriatahum wama aletna hum min amal min shay. When Allah was talking about, He said, min shay. We shall not reduce the reward of that your child that is doing good good deeds, and your it wouldn't be half five. It will be the full reward that your child gets is what you will get. The full reward that your parents will get because of your righteousness is that which you will get. So that's why training a child to be managed, Islamically managed. It is something whose reward is continuous. Then number eight is patience at the time of difficulties. Patience at the time of difficulties. So difficult time. So also to rely upon Allah at these times. <laughs> One of the most difficult things for you and I is Allah. We all know that Allah did not promise any of us a problem free life. At a point, we shall experience some difficulties. No doubt about it. It's part and parcel of the design of Allah. And Allah already talked about that. Allah already talked about that to us in many sources. But the one that I know almost all of us know is Allah 
الذي خلق الموت والحياة الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا so between this life and the time we shall return back to Allah سبحانه وتعالى there's no doubt that Allah is going to test us. And I mentioned in my last, last presentation when I was talking about purification of, of the heart, that the only time that you are only, you can access your faith is when difficulties comes. Of course, we can do it in other forms, but the, the, the time that tells whether we are, we are firm, we are we, 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 we are firm or we are rooted in our faith is when when we experience some difficulties in life because sometimes we experience some difficulties and we just miss the road we just get off the track i've been asking allah for this how come he did not answer my question i go to the mosque i do this I donate day and night. Everything I'm on, you know, I clean the mustard. I make arrangement for this. I do that. How come I'm not even answer? Brothers and sisters, we must be patient. Because it is part and parcel of the design of Allah to test us. And that is the time to know whether we are firm or not. When, the, when, when you are faced with something that is some difficulties and you did not go beyond what Allah teaches us to do. At that time, you need to rely upon Allah wholeheartedly, with all your heart. Say, no, no. I will continue to bear whatever, but I will not leave Allah. Because imagine how many people now have been cursed, even among Muslims, that have been called back by Allah to his presence. Many. Whatever you achieve also, remember, one day you shall leave it. It could be that Allah knows that that thing will not, is not good for you. That's why he did not let it get to you. Then you become upset. You, you know, some, you, you may say, oh, I'm not even going to the masjid today. I don't even want to participate in some of this program. I don't why. I've been calling upon him. Muslims don't do that. If you're doing that, you should know that your faith is not well rooted. You are muzeb zeb. You are not neither here nor there. Whatever Allah brings, say to them that nothing will happen to us except that which Allah has written for us. What Allah has written that will happen to us is what is happening to us. So you do not say no. Why? Why? I ask him, I did this and did that. No. One thing you should remember. Nor should we even associate that to anyone in your heart of heart. Even if someone says, yes, I am the one that is causing this trouble for you. This problem, I'm the one that is causing it for you. You should know that no one can cause any thing for you except Allah. That's why you say, Nothing will happen to, him, to me except what Allah has written for me. Who are you to tell me that? Right? He's a human being. That person himself is a human being. He cannot prevent evil from reaching him himself. So who is that person to tell you that he's the one that is causing harm for you? Wallahi. If Allah wants to tell, if Allah wanted to test that person, he will not get out of the of the test of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah wants to try that person, he will not get out of the trial. So we as Muslims, we know that nothing can happen except by the permission of Allah. And when something happens, ah, and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can remove it away from us. How many people, a lot of people have tried to help and they couldn't help them. They couldn't help them because the time of Allah has not come. So we have to be patient. 
These patients start with trial that we go through. Patient as a person, as I mentioned also in my last lecture, that Professor Salam told us that Laysa Shadidu Man Ralabanas in Nama Shadidu Man Ralabanafsahu in the Rodok. It is not him who is so who is so powerful, muscular, that beat up his opponents. But the real strong person is a person when he gets so angry, is able to control him or herself. If you are, cannot control yourself, then you are not a powerful, powerful person. But the only powerful person is a person who is able, who is able to help others, to, to, to take control of his, of, of, of his anger. So we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for us. Again, patience. Patience. We have to be patient in anything, in everything that we do between us and our children, between us and our spouses, and between us and the people out there. We have to be patient. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us to exercise patience. Then, we talk about uh, number nine, we forbid evil. When you forbid evil, that itself is a form of sadaqah, it's a form of charity. When you say, no, you know something is wrong, and you, you try to correct that thing, you forbid it in the most polite way, in the most polite way. And I emphasize that. We must do correction in the most polite way. We don't correct people in, in, in a bad way. We have to correct people in the most polite way. We have to be polite, even in correcting others, even in forbidding evil. So if you see evil, find a way of correcting it find a way of correcting it, then with good intention, not with the intention of exposing that person. Because sometimes we want to expose people, expose their wrongs, expose their mistakes. We want to expose their wrongdoings. No, this should not be intention. And believe me, many of us do this, but that shouldn't be our intention. If you want to correct something, number one thing for it to be a sadaqah for you is to call yourself back. Relax. Check your intention. Sincerely, you got to check your intention. Am I sincere? Do I want to... Uh, and in any way, even if you want to do that correction, if it's necessary, it's necessary of course, it's necessary to make sure that you forbid evil, you should not start talking about it in the, in the public in order for it to be sadaqah for you. Because if you did that, number one, you're going to lose your reward. Number two, you're going to also put yourself in trouble. You're also going to put yourself in trouble because there's some hadith on this kind of, uh, of issues that anyone whose intention is to expose the mistakes of others, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expose the mistake of that person, even if he's hidden in the, in the hole of lizard. So don't expose. لا تشمت بأخيك فيعافي الله ويبتليك do not make fun of some people that have made mistakes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may free that person from his mistakes. Then Allah will test you. It's you too. Maybe someone is sick. Or any things, any particular thing that you see someone, you know, did. So don't, 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 don't make fun of them. Or in mistakes done by someone. Don't make fun of that person. Because for your Allah, he may he may get he, he may be free of it. And allow me to test you. 
That's why you don't say, oh, look at this, look at this. If you need to refer to some source, you have to check your intention and you should, you should be sure that you do not mean it in your heart of heart because this, this, this kind of thing, Satan help, help us a lot to expose the people. Satan helps us a lot to expose other people. Rather than looking at your own mistakes and look for a way to correct yourself, you just love, Satan just help us to expose others. This is wrong. Because Allah may test you. If you are making fun of some people whose children are not listening, for example, or are engaged in drugs or are engaged in some bad acts, you're making fun, you think, MashaAllah, it's your own making that your children are flourishing. The time you're still alive, Allah may test you while you're alive, and even when you are no more, Allah may test you in the same way. So we have to be very careful. In doing so, Allah may test us severely. Do not make fun of anybody. So we pray to Allah to forgive us. So when you see someone doing the wrong things, uh, it is compulsory upon you to find a good way to make correction and forbid that by deeds. Not with intention of exposing that person. Stop others from doing harm. So no, you stop that person from doing harm to other people. So that is that that is part of what uh, we must do. And also part of the teachings, which is part of what we have mentioned before, is that. But I've made it number ten. That is talk. Softly, talk softly. Do not be harsh and rude. Talk softly. Don't be harsh, nor should you be rude. We have to be patient. And we have to talk, even in correcting others, or even in making our points. We have to relax. Even when you want to make points, and you have points to make, at the same time, Talk softly. Do not be harsh, nor should you be rude. So we have to know that doing so is, is, is also a form of sadaqah. It is a form of, of sadaqah that in a position, in a position to get so angry, so angry, you cool down. You cool yourself down just for the sake of Allah. And you talk softly. Even there could be some signs of anger. But at the same time, you are still in control of yourself. We have to talk to people softly and do not be harsh nor rude to your fellow human beings. So even though, as we know, part of the teachings of Allah is that, uh, is that we should say that which is good. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Al Kalimatu Tayyibatu Sadaqa. Good words, nice words that is meant well, it is indeed a form of sadaqa. So when you're supposed to be harsh and you relax, even though there's been some, some signs of anger and you are able to control yourself, you will have the reward of a person who gives in charity. And also, forgiveness. So number 11 here is forgiveness. Be someone who forgives. You have to be able to forgive. There's no way people are not going to do things that you don't like. Such is the life. But we have to be forgiven. Look, the best prayer during this month of Ramadan that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spent the last 10 days of Ramadan, when, when, when the, the Sahaba asked, said that Aisha, what shall we be saying? He said, what Prophet Salaam taught me was, Allahumma inna ka'afuun kareemun tuhibbu al-afwa fa'afu'anni. Oh Allah, you, you yourself, you have forgiveness. Allah, inna ka'afuun, you are pardon. Kareemun tuhibbu al-afwa. And you love to pardon. So something that Allah loves, you love to do something that Allah loves. It's a form of charity. That something you don't want to forgive. And you forgive it for the sake of Allah. So forgive people who ask you for forgiveness. It is part and parcel of giving in charity. 
This is not a joke. To give in charity to those who seek, uh, to give in, in uh, forgive those who ask you to forgive them, it is indeed a form of charity. And also number 12 here, give respect to the elders uh, as well as young stars. So you give respect to the elders as well as young stars. So it is part of Dean to respect our elders. And it is part of Dean also to respect our young stars. They need to feel respected. Even though they are young, let's respect them. And anyone who's older than us, let's respect them. Even if you are in a higher place, if you have the whole entire world, if Allah is giving you the entire world, yet the lowest, the person that you think is the lowest of the low to you could be in the highest place in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We judge ourselves according to our ranks and our position at work. You may not know that this person, a beggar, or a person that doesn't have much, but we look down upon that person simply because he doesn't have as much as, much as we do. We look down upon him. We shouldn't. Given respect to those who are much lower than you, you know, materially, it is part of charity. When you have the opportunity to say, no, this is me, I, I'm this one, so I'm it's just lower, lower, recommend, you know, bring yourself, lower your wings, lower your wings. Don't say, I am this, this is how much I'm earning, this is whatever, this is what position I'm holding. This, no, come on. How about those who hold better position than you? Didn't they return back to Allah one day? Did, they, did their riches prevent them from dying? All their intelligence, everything. Even the position that you have reached yourself. Was it your own making or Allah's making? That position itself is Allah's making. Not because you are so intelligent. There are people out there who are more intelligent than you are. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't give the opportunity to achieve what you, are, what you have achieved. Or uh, There are people in the villages that if they had the opportunity you are having, that they will be better than you. So therefore, you must respect elders, those that are older than you, and you must respect also the youngsters. We must respect them. Also number 13 that I want to mention is be happy, sincere happiness for others. Be sincerely happy for others. Some people, when good things happen to their friends or some of their families, they are not happy. They may say it as of when I first started and I talked about dua. And I said, you make dua when you see someone sick or someone is not feeling good or someone is experiencing some difficulty, you pray for them behind without them being there. With, from your heart of heart, at the same time, there are many people who will be doing something and out there we say, oh, we, we rejoice with them. We rejoice with them. But the truly, that person is not, is not really rejoicing. He's not happy for the good things that have happened to others. So when others are rejoicing, when good things that happen to some people, please re Join them in rejoicing for that. Do not say it's not me or out of jealousy. Sometimes out of jealousy. We don't really, we are just saying it just for people to see or for that person to see. In reality, we are not rejoicing with that person. In reality. We are not really happy for that person. We are just pretending. That is hypocrisy. And remember, that hypocrites, al munafiqun fit dunkil asfali minan, they will be in the lowest of the low in hellfire. They will be in the lowest of the low in hellfire. They will be the bottom in the bottom of hellfire. So, be happy for others. True happiness, out of your happiness, true happiness, Allah can give you something better. Like or even better, he knows what is good. 
for you, and he knows what is good for him. His time has come. Rejoice with him from your heart of heart. Wallahi, it is so sad. You will see some people sitting down on some occasions, claim to be rejoicing with a person. At the same time, they will be talking evil about that person. They'll be talking ill about that person. The person him, whom he claimed to have come to rejoice with, that was showing that he's happy with him, he will be talking all kind of nonsense about the same person. Allah, on the, this is so dangerous because on the day of resurrection, that is one of the most dangerous things one should never do. Because on the day of resurrection, what will happen to you? What will happen to you? What will happen is that everything, because you are an hypocrite, and everything you have, all the ill talk about him shall be taken from your good deeds. You will repay him back with your good deeds. That's how you're going to repay, repay him. And if everybody takes his own, how much are you going to have left? And you have not, if you have nothing left, they will give him, they will put your his sins upon you. It's so dangerous. Don't do it. It's so common. It's such a terrible thing that is common in our communities. It's such a terrible thing. You show that you are happy with somebody. Just on your way to that person's occasion, you talk ill of him. Leaving, you talk ill of him. At home, you, you talk ill of him. On that occasion, you talk ill of him. So it's better for that person, Wallahi, by Allah, in whose hand is my life, it is better for you to sit down at home, not going to that occasion than being present in, on, in that occasion. Because what is the purpose? You are going to destroy some of your good deeds. Look at it. Because you are going to pay that person back with your good deeds. It's better for you to stay at home. Don't go. If it's naming, if it's housewarming, whatever it is, don't go. If it's uh, uh, if, if any 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 joyous occasion, stay at home. Don't go. Don't even congratulate the person. Be sincere with yourself. Don't be who you are not. So be happy for others with sincerity. Be sincere. Don't talk ill of that person. When they are done, so, and, and so bad. Some people, when you are talking good about a, a person, then that's the time for that person to talk ill of him, of him or her. It is so dangerous for us. So to be happy for others is indeed a form of charity. I don't think we're going to have enough time uh, to, maybe another time, to talk about some benefits. Uh, I, I think my time is about to be finished. We still have some more left. And also, I have not talked about the benefit of this. Maybe, inshallah, uh, if my time is up, please let me know so that I can stop. Yeah, you still have about 15, 20 minutes, ma'am. Ah, okay. Thank you. So the next number 14 here is visit the sick, the, the sick people. It is sadaqa. In the hadith of the Prophet, sallam, the Prophet sallam, told us, man zara maridan. أو زار أخا له في الله ناداه منادياً طبت وطاب ممشاك وبورئت في الجنة منزلا من زار مريضا whoever visit a sick person أو زار أخا له في الله or he visit a Muslim brother or a sister for the sake of Allah I'm not talking about a brother visiting a sister that is going to be haram for you. This is not what I'm talking about. That's a imam said we should visit a brother or sister. No, no, no. You, I, I know you should know what is right, what is wrong. So if you visit a, a someone, if a sister visits another sister for the sake of Allah, just to check on that person, that is a form of charity. If you see, visit your Muslim brother for the sake of Allah, just checking on him. That is a form of charity. And when you are leaving home, pray. Do the dua. Bismillah. Then move out. Go. For this, and, and visit a sick person also. Or sick people in hospital. It's part of our deen to visit those who are sick. 
I remember one day, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after Fajr immediately, he asked Sahaba, who is it that has done so so so, so and that has given in charity? Who is it that has visited a sick person? And Sayyidina Abu Bakr was one of those who had, who had already visited a sick person on the way, on his way to the masjid for Fajr. And Sayyidina Umar was saying, ah, Muhammad, Prophet, we have just finished Fajr. And almost all these things that the Prophet asked, Sayyidina Umar already did it. He had already given someone money in the masjid that was asking in the masjid. So it is an act of charity to visit the sick people in hospital, whether you know them or you don't know them, even for us to take time out to visit those who are sick, just to visit them. This also is a reminder. It's a reminder for ourselves that we also may get sick like this. I and one of the things that I've seen, even those who are home, not only those who are in hospital only, those who are home, I'm not talking about now that uh, that, uh, that we you know we don't supposed to visit other at this time of pandemic. I'm not asking you to go and visit a sick person now, please. So um, uh, when things is things are normal, that's what we are talking about. When things are normal, so we visit those who are sick even in their homes. And you know one of the beauty that I have I've realized when someone whom you know that loves you for the sake of Allah, visit you. you, you get better. You feel good. You feel good. So when someone comes with, an, with a good intention, you feel good, you feel better, and you can even start to get better by seeing some people that have come to visit you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And people that you believe that have come to visit you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that whoever visits is sick or visit his brother or sister for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not for any reason, not for any benefit, not to ask him for a favor. The two angels, Nada the two angels will be calling upon that person. Tripta, oh, what a good thing you have done. What a good trip uh, uh, you have made. And your place is awaiting you in Jannah. What a beautiful reward for those who visit sick and for those who visit each other only, only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in this case, also, we should be very, very careful. When we visit someone, you say, he's died. Oh, when I was there, you see this, you see that, you see that, you lose all your reward. Also, you carry the, you carry the sin of that person. It's so dangerous. When we visit, we visit with Adam. Part of the adapt of the dean is don't look at what is surrounding, what is what that you don't you have go to you have gone there to see the person that is sick. Don't start prognosing into other things in their house. And you start talking about those things later. In a way and form to make fun of that person. Be careful. And one of the ways which is number 15 here to give charity is clear the path by, remo by removing harmful things from the way or from the path of people which is this Prophet told us that meaning removing harmful things from people's path is a form of charity. Removing harmful things from the way of people is a form of charity. What does that mean? Not only by removing, because sometimes, maybe through your advice, through other things, you may be able to remove harmful, invisible harmful things away from people. There are visible harmful things, there are invisible harmful things that you can move away from people. You can help people by not getting to wrong things, you know, with your advice, for example. You can help them by not getting into trouble. So you remove any harmful thing from the path of people, both physical and, and, 
uh, non-physical. Also, part of the way, part of the charity is to feed your spouse between husband and wife. Every lukma, every single ukeli, every single spoon of rice, ricey, that you give your wife, it is a form of charity. So that's why uh, you every day when you are feeding your 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 your, your wife is uh, you know, the responsibility is upon you. Anything you do, anything you do to satisfy her, it is a form of charity to the level that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught us that wa fi ibudi kulli wahidin minkum sadaqa. Even when you have conjugal relationship. It is a form of charity. So we should do all that happily and joyfully. So it is a form of charity to feed your spouse. Don't complain. Even if you don't have enough, ask Allah, oh Allah, please give me enough money. Please enrich me so that I can spend upon my family. Sometimes we complain. I give this. I do that. You ask me for this. You ask me for that. Ask Allah instead of complaining. Ask Allah to make it easy for you. Ask Allah to make it easy for you. If the intention is good, Allah will make it easy for you. But it's not about, no, 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 come on, come on, I've told you, you, are, you pay your half. And then it's not about that. And we are not talking that, 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 we are not saying that the wife should not help the husband. We are not saying that. But your intention is to fully take care of your wife's needs. If it's not enough, then understanding in between the two we try to understand each other but your intention not intention of no 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 uh no he, she's doing her work she's doing it. no 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 whatever she's doing is for her if she gives you is a form of charity from her if she gives you for my riches for my money for my work is a form of charity from her it's duty you upon you it's your duty for which allah will reward you for so please let's remember this uh now from here i think uh, i still have like five minutes from what uh, uh Fat sharif told me a few minutes i just like to remind remind us that wallahi given charity huh, in many 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 you know we have heard of stories true stories about this people say that Aisha radiallahu anha Sometimes when someone comes and she doesn't have, she will give Ainab, you know, two uh, grips, just two grips. And say, at Ajabin, and we ask, we ask him, do you think, are you surprised that I give this little out? Uh, so that is what she had that time, and she will give them out for the sake of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's no many stories that, uh, I mean, just uh, mention some that given charity, sometimes if you are sincere, at the time you are giving charity, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is um, untie some of your problems. At the time you are giving charities, we have heard from some great scholars about some people whose child uh, was taken captives, for example, during the war uh, between Muslims and 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 and, uh, and room and and room, and, and this woman didn't have anything. It's in the book of Sirah. This woman didn't have anything. Someone came to knock. Uh, she's not rich. Someone came to knock her door, asking her for food, and she had just put something in front of her. She didn't have anything else except that, and she gave it in charity. And she asked Allah, Oh Allah, please, by this charity that I've given out, please Allah, allow my child to be freed. And by Allah, they said that on that very day, it's a long uh, story, on that very day, the child was freed. Because when the child came home after a few days, and he asked, what happened? When was it? And he said, on such and so day, I was freed. It happens to be the day that the woman gave her food to someone else 
to eat when she had nothing else to eat. So charity unties so many knots. Charity is so good. Giving in charity. Don't when you give. Also, the Prophet Salam taught us that manakaso manun min sadaqa, meaning your rich your, your sadaqa is not diminished by giving in charity. Your money, sorry, your money, your riches is not diminished by giving in charity. Because the more you give, the more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you. So, anyone who gives in charity sincerely, even if your things is, if some of your riches are lost, you may find them. And also dua. You, you also give out when someone is sick, maybe seriously sick or you are sick. Give out with the intention that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala return your good health back to you. We have heard many stories about this from our great scholars. Because giving in charity is a form of shukr ni ni'matil mal. It's a form of giving thanks for the pleasure of the riches that Allah has given you. Also, sadaqah, indeed, it, just, it, it, it pull out the, 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 the fire of anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِنَّمَا يَسْتَظِلُّ الْمُؤْمِنُ بِذِلِّ صَدَقَاتِهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ And some of us, on the day of resurrection, will be under the shade of that sadaqah that Allah accepts. But he's one that knows the one he accepts. Do also remember that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah SWT says to us in the Quran, مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يُقْرِضُ اللَّهَ قَرْضًا حَسَنًا فَيُضَاعِفَهُ لَهُ أَضْعَافًا كَثِيرًا مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يُقْرِضُ اللَّهَ Allah says, who is loan? Who will loan Allah a goodly loan? Any sadaqa, you are loaning Allah. A goodly loan. And Allah says, and I will give him a manifold. Sadaqa is a form of loan. To Allah. Don't think your money will be reduced by giving. No. You know, Sayyidina Aisha, Ma'awiyah sent some gift to Ma'awiyah sent some gift to Sayyidina Aisha after the, 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 the death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, about 80, 80, 80 dinar. Or 800, they say 800 dinar or so. No. As a gift to Sayyidatna Aisha. For my amsa indaha dirham wahid. The same day she gave the entire thing in charity, for example. So, therefore, our brothers and sisters, I think this is uh, uh, the time is up now, so I don't go beyond the time. Uh, I pray to Allah to make it easy for you and I to give in charity. And this is the month of giving in charity. This, this is the month in which Allah is more generous than even the earth. So we pray to Allah to make it easy for us and bless each and every, every one of us and accept our sacrifices. Do not forget. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from, from this pandemic. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from this pandemic. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, save us from this pandemic and save our families. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make ibadah easy for you and I and also to worship Allah alone. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa sallim. Wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.